Hey, good evening. Welcome to our midweek Bible study. I'm glad you joined us and uh, glad you're tuning in. I hope you've had a good week. It's been uh, it's been an interesting week. It's gotten warm again, so I hope you're uh, staying cool. And you know, before we know it, cold weather will come. I was inspired and maybe a little challenged uh, today by a very familiar occasion, and I'm calling it an occasion because as soon as I explain it, you'll understand where I'm going with this, but it's recorded in Matthew chapter four, uh, as well as numerous times in this kind of setting in other of the gospels. Um, the gospels being the biology, uh, biography of, biography of uh, the men that follow Jesus, right? The 12 disciples and specifically uh, the four that wrote what we call the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, their biographies of saying this is what happened when, when we were with Jesus. And uh, they record, uh, obviously, some things before they were with him. So, you know, based on, on what, they could, uh, what they could have people say and the history that they knew happened in Jesus' life. And Matthew records this way. He records a few of the disciples following Jesus. Now, I believe this was recorded before Matthew himself was following Jesus. So I believe he probably went to these men and said, hey, how did this happen? But here's, here's the occasion. Here's what happened. Uh, recorded in Matthew chapter 4, again, Matthew writing this, uh, recording what happened. He said Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee. and uh, That's actually a, a very beautiful spot. My wife and I visited this spot uh, where where they think, scholars think, Jesus found these men. And he says he's, he found these two brothers, or he saw these two brothers, Simon Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once, they left their nets and followed him. Now going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, his brother John, they were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets, also fishermen. Jesus called them and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Now, um, this, this may be, like I said, a sort of an occasion or setting that uh, if, you, if you've grown up around you know, Bible stories and Bible reading, you, you've, you've known this. You probably memorized some of it. You've heard this story repeatedly. Uh, maybe if you haven't, uh, heard this a lot, you at least know of it, of where Jesus called men to himself, specifically the 12 men, we call them his disciples, and in this case, four. What I want to point out that I think is significant, um, Jesus came by and he saw these men. Now, there could be a lot of uh, parts to this story, this equation that we don't know, um, but I'm going to guess that it would have been recorded if it would have been you know, if, if it would have been something that affected how we should read this. So I'm thinking of, of Jesus as this young Jewish man, um, this young, uh, you know, he, he came across as uh, someone who was uh, pursuing God, right? So they would have these uh, young men, maybe scholars, uh, that would decide they're just going to leave their, you know, the normal lifestyle that people live and they're just going to, they're just going to try to find God and they're going to try to seek God's voice and, you know, they're going to study, study what they had then in scripture. So he, it probably wasn't completely abnormal to have a young Jewish man, you know, doing that and pursuing that, you know, going off the normal workforce and everything else that people did. Uh, but in this case, I don't know that they knew of Jesus before. And here was two different occasions, back to back, two men that left everything they knew. They left you know, their career. Now, granted, I think they were all four pretty young men, so they had probably just started this career of fishing, and uh, you know, maybe it was because they did it because they did it with their dad and all of the connection with that, as we would have some today in, uh, in family work styles. Uh, but, but also, it, it could be to the fact that you know, they liked what they were doing, they enjoyed fishing, and you know, this was what they knew, and you know, they didn't know Jesus. And Jesus came along and called them. There had to be something intriguing about Jesus. There had to be something that would make them immediately latch on to his invitation of saying, you know, come, follow me. Let's, 
let's go do something greater than what you're doing. Now, I don't know that he said that. I mean, he said, I'll, I'll teach you to be fishers of men. Um, and he says, I will make you fishers of men. So maybe that intrigued him. Like, what does that mean? But it really intrigues me that they would leave their career. They would leave what they knew. They would leave their family setting. You know, and, and when they did this, they didn't know that we now know, looking back, we know it was three years, but they didn't know that it was going to be three years or 10 years or a month. But they decided to drop everything and follow Jesus. I want to intrigue you with the fact that today, that Holy Spirit speaking to us, which we know is Jesus in spirit form speaking to us, right? When Jesus calls us, when Jesus speaks to us, there is something still so intriguing about the voice of Jesus that draws us, that causes us to listen, that causes us to be intrigued. This is why people come to God. This is why people um, all over the world are, are continually to be intrigued with there's something about Jesus. There's something about that voice I heard maybe when I was depressed or maybe when I was in the middle of a crisis or maybe in the middle of a lifestyle that I was sick of and, and I felt this presence or I heard this voice or someone spoke to me and I just felt Jesus. How often do we hear that? What I want to encourage you with tonight, maybe challenge you, maybe intrigue you, is there is something about Jesus Christ. Just as here as he called these fishermen two different times, you know, right back to back, two brothers, and they dropped on, followed him. This is still happening repeatedly all throughout the world. I hope it happened in your life. I hope it continues to happen. When Jesus calls us, when when we feel like somehow, again, maybe the Holy Spirit, maybe through our conscious conscience, maybe through someone else speaking to us, but we hear the voice of Jesus, we hear him calling, we hear him inviting, and something intrigues us, just like it did these men. Follow the voice of Jesus. When that voice calls you, when Jesus speaks, you know, here the, the other challenge part of this is they really, they, they gave it up all and just went out in faith and said, hey, you know, we're going to follow, we're going to follow this man. That's sometimes more than what you, are, you and I are willing to do. So today, not only should we continue to be intrigued by the voice of Jesus, if you're a believer, you've already answered that invitation to a certain extent. If you're a non-believer, I, I really want you to, to listen and be intrigued with that voice of Jesus inviting you into believing in him. But as believers, Jesus continues to beckon, continues to call. Sometimes it means leaving what we know. Sometimes it means leaving what we really enjoy. Sometimes it means leaving the people we're used to being around. But when Jesus calls, it should be beckoning. It should be intriguing. And then you and I, we get to make a decision. We say, hey, do we jump out in faith? And do we leave our nets and leave our boats and leave our father, leave our career and go what Jesus really is calling us to? Or do we stiff arm him and say, ah, Jesus, I don't quite trust you. You know, you look like a pretty common dude that wants to follow God walking down the seashore, but I'm not willing to jump that fast. How easy is that for you not to do? So tonight, think about the idea that Peter and James and James and John, these guys, Jesus called, they're following. How many times is Jesus calling you? Let's follow Let's be not only intrigued, but actually answer that invitation and go where he wants us to go. Follow him where he leads. That's what I encourage you tonight. Allow me to pray with you. Lord Jesus, thank you for your incredible power. Thank you we can rest in you. Thank you how you, you show yourself strong so many times over and over. And God, I praise you personally for how you, you've shown strong in my life this week. And Jesus, I pray that everyone that's, that's with me now online that that you could uh, sort of help us to see in reflection or help us to see in, in, in history of how you've just reached out maybe as, as shortly as yesterday or last week or last year. And Jesus, may that intrigue within us to continue to step out in faith when you call, that we answer that invitation and we follow you wherever you would go. Lord Jesus, would you make that real to us tonight? May you bless each listener. Uh, help us to have a good night's rest, a good rest of the week, God. We glorify you, Jesus. Thank you 
for being our Savior. We praise you for you are worthy. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you the rest of the week. Thanks for joining me uh, here for a few moments online. Remember to join us live here at Berean Community Church on Sunday or online. Uh, Eli Troyer is going to be speaking on Sunday and bringing a, a word from God. So we invite you to come. May God bless you.